today's tutorial is showing you how you can create a simple stylized sand material in Substance Designer. We're going to create a sand material base that can be used on its own or built on to become something more detailed. We'll go through the steps today of starting a new project, creating material from scratch, making a stylized sand material and then exporting that into another software for rendering. We want to go in and add a new Substance Graph. We want to use the metallic roughness preset here and name it Stylized Sand 01. The metallic roughness preset is the important one to use because when it loads in when we hit OK, you'll see that it automatically imports all of the output nodes that we're going to need later on to create our texture and send it off to other programs. We've got our base color, our normal, roughness, metallic, ambient occlusion and our height. First we want to go in and add a Polygon 2 node to get us started. The reason we use the Polygon 2 because as you can see in the bottom right, it's got those bright white lines that we're going to use to create our ridges. After that is our splatter node. Now, as you can see in the bottom right, that tiles everything up into a grid, and we can start to change the parameters here to give it that pattern that sand is known for. Now we're just gonna keep changing the parameters and play around with things until we start to get that look we're going for. And I'm gonna increase the luminance variation down the bottom to start bringing out some contrast as well on the image. Once we're happy with that, we're going to add in a warp node. We can either hit tab to add it in like we've done with the other nodes, or we can just find it up the top there. For the gradient input here, we're going to add in a Gaussian 1 node. We're going to use this because it's going to help us to create the ripples and the waves in the sand. They're going to make it look more natural and realistic. Increase the tiling so we get a bit more variation going as well, and then just plug that output into the gradient input. Now if we switch back over we can start to see that it's going to be creating those waves and ripples, play around with the intensity to get something that you're happy with. Next let's add in some noise and some texture to the sand. I'm going to add in another warp node and this time for the gradient input I'm going to add a noise map, a cloud one map. Any noise map will work for this one but I just use the clouds one because it has a lot of detail and variation in it. Now I'm going to keep the intensity quite low because I don't want the graininess to be sticking out too much because we're going to add a little bit more detail in later in another way. To get things looking a bit more like sand, we can go back and increase the scale to make the grains finer, and that'll make things look a bit more natural and realistic like they're supposed to. Again, now we're just messing around with the parameters and creating something that we like. Now we're going to add in a histogram scan node, and this is so we can start to bring out the contrast and the colours a bit more. Starting to move these values around is what's going to help us to push up the ridges when we start to add height to the sand. So now I'm going to give myself a bit more room so we can add an extra level of detail. We're going to add some more noise for the grain. Now you can add just about any noise map that you like, but I'm going to choose to use a white noise here because I like how it looks. We want our histogram scan to be plugged into the background and our white noise into the foreground. This means that when we turn the opacity slider down on the blend node, it's going to bring our detail back from the histogram scan. Again, we're going to use quite a low value for the grain here, because we don't want it to be too overpowering. The next thing we're going to add in is a Blur HQ Grayscale. We're going to use this next node to wash the detail out and make it look a bit more hand painted and stylized. Again, just a really low intensity here to get rid of some of that finer detail, but keep the grain. This is important because it's getting rid of some of that extra grain, but it's keeping the variation in the roughness that's going to affect how the light hits our material later on. Now we can start to plug in our maps. So I'll take the output of the Blur HQ Grayscale and plug it into the normal map first. As you can see in the bottom left, this is going to start to bring up the normal on the 3D view. To add a bit more height to it, we're going to get rid of the uniform colour attached to the height and once again plug that blur hair shoe grayscale directly into the height and as you can see in the bottom left it added a bit more. Now I don't really like how it looks on the cube here, so I'm going to change that over to look at the rounded cylinder because it follows the texture a bit nicer. And if we have a zoom in and look you can see that the grain is starting to come out of it as well. The next thing to do is to change our materials from the default to the metallic roughness, tessellation and displacement settings. Over in the right that's going to open up some properties there and the one we're looking for is height where we can increase the scale to really start bringing out those ridges and make it look a bit more stylized. Get rid of the uniform colour that's attached to the base colour and this time we want to add in a curvature smooth node. Thank you. 
When we plug in our normal, it's going to take the information from all of the stuff that's come before in the normal map to add to our base color, which helps us with our gradient map as you'll see when we add that one in. So next up the top, just adding a gradient map between the two and we're going to start to add some color. Make sure we're on the color mode, not the grayscale, and open up that gradient editor. From here on out, it's all about just creating a gradient and selecting the colors and just playing around with the values until you start to get what you're looking for. Now, when I zoom in and have a look there, I think things are looking a little bit shiny. So I'm going to remove the uniform color from the roughness and add in a histogram scan. This is going to give us a little bit more control and help us using the gradients and everything that's come before from our blur HQ grayscale to change how the roughness looks and change how the light is hitting the sand there. Now we're going to add in one more level of detail here. I'm going to use a Gaussian spot one node to add in some rocky detail to it. Next I'm going to add in a gradient map and start to try and bring out some of those bright whites and isolate the nicer looking shapes. We can continue playing with that gradient trying to push out those shapes and then add in a levels node to really isolate and sharpen the edges there. From there add in another blend node, plug it into the foreground and change the opacity down until you get something that you're happy with. I'm going to increase the scale so we get smaller rocks going on there and then it's just about tweaking the values to find what you're happy with. Now I'm going to go back in early on after my clouds noise node and add in a blur just to reduce some more of that detail that's showing up there. The next thing I'm going to add in after our gradient map is a HSL node. For our hue, saturation and lightness you can just start to tweak around the values and really bring out the bright colours that makes it look stylized. I'm going to add in another node in here, a contrast and luminosity grade node. So what we're going to do with this is really try and bring out those ridges, bring out the colours of them and just play around with the values here until we find something that we're pretty happy with. And that's the great thing about Substance Designer is that at this point in the pipeline where we're just starting to fine tune and tweak values, we can go back to any of the nodes that we've added in the past all the way back to the very first ones, make changes there and it will update the end result without causing any issues. And this is where node-based materials have a benefit over layer-based materials. It's a lot easier to find everything in a node-based material system like Substance Designer rather than something like Substance Painter, where if you want to make a big change like that to an earlier layer, it could have drastic effects on your later progress. Now once we're happy with how the values are looking, the final thing that we're going to do is export this and import it into Marmoset for a final render. The first thing we want to export out is our cylinder down the bottom under scene. Save that out as an FBX somewhere that you can find later. After that we want to export out our bitmaps, so right click stylize Sando 1 the substance graph and export the outputs as bitmaps. Open up a brand new Marmoset scene and we're going to go to the library and import the showcase material scene. That preset just gives us a set of lighting and a backdrop to make things look nice for our final render. Import our FBX and apply a displacement material, add in our nodes and our maps and start to play around with those values of the lighting and see if you can get things looking nice for your final render. From there we want to add in a turntable, get things animated and hit our final render button. And there we have it, a stylized sand material in Substance Designer. Thank you very much for watching our tutorial, I hope it's helped you out. Have a great day.